time for a little bit of refining. So here's what I'm doing. I am going in and I'm refining the forms that have already uh, been sculpted in before. And so I'm adding little wrinkles and suggestive uh, tool marks that will give you a good idea of what kind of um, surface this might be. So I'm kind of going for like a lizardy kind of squishy, uh, but bony. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting mix, but no, it's more like a um, like a hard shelled, but it's got a little bit of pliability to the surface. Um, that's kind of what I thought at least. But just using the um, carve, carving in these little wrinkles, and then I'll kind of puff them up with the foamy. Let's go ahead and set this eye apart. Make it nice black with a nice white specular. And I'm going to do that for both these guys. There we go. A little bit more kaiju. So just um, going around and slowly adding in these, these marks. Not too slow. Uh, I want it to feel intuitive as I go. I don't want to get too anatomical and medical with this. Um, it's just to kind of get a feel for what this beast might be. But almost pure VDM tools in this kind of uh, detail work with digging in these wrinkles and um, adding the ridges along the edges of the forms where that are necessary. But in between the cuts and in between the wrinkles I'll go in and add a little bit of tube or foamy you can even just use a sculpt brush without any kind of stamp. Um, works just fine as well. I just kind of like the feel of the VDMs. And what I'm doing here with this detail is setting up also for the finer detail, to like the textural kind of skin quality um, with the uh, with the stamps and stencils that we would typically add last. So all of this work is also preparing for that. So I'll leave some areas pretty flat and smooth because I know that a stamp or a stencil is going to be going in there and doing a lot of the work. It's just the major, major stuff I add right here. The, the big form selling kind of shapes and defining kind of marks. To me this kind of part of the most fun process. And I'll use a scrape and I'll kind of give some faceting to some of these um, smoother areas just to give it a little bit more hard hard surface kind of uh, feel to it so it's not too rounded. I just kind of hop around and hit up a bunch of different areas and sometimes my mind wants to completely change and just start cutting back wrinkles back in because I see a lot of smooth areas like down here on this last part of his crown. I see some spots that need a lot of wrinkle work and then I'll go back into scraping. So it's kind of an organic process for me. go ahead and do some of the, hit some of the back, um, not to get forgotten. Try to hit all the surfaces. That way I can do some good renders, some good turntable renders, and get all the angles of this guy and um, not worry about things missing or things not having any detail. But there is some anatomical kind of uh, thought process going on here too. It's not just mindless tool marks everywhere. Thinking about how um, flesh might kind of bunch up near the corners of the mouth or um, you know how they might feel around those horns. Just 
try and get a lot of good volumes going so it feels tactile and um, somewhat realistic. So that's just about it for this part of the process. Kind of, like I said, it's the most fun for me. So I usually kind of take my time on this part.